Why is my water heater making noises? Now this is plumbing 101. Have you ever had that problem? Have you ever been out by your water heater and heard it making noises? This is a call that we get a lot that really isn't that big a deal. And if you hang around to the end, I'll tell you the one thing that you can do to make most of these noises go away. If you're new here, or even if you've been here before and you've never done it, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Boiling, banging, popping, growling. Have you heard this noise from your water heater? When your water heater makes noises, it's actually, it's trying to talk to you. It's trying to tell you something. So when it makes a noise like that, well, you've normally got a sediment built up. Make sure you hang around to the end where we answer two questions in two minutes. And if you've got a question, go to two minutes, two questions.com to ask your question. So first of all, if you hear a rumbling or growling, it's like your, your stomach's growling in the middle of the night. Well, what happens in a water heater is if you haven't flushed it in a long time, and that can be either gas or electric, you can actually get a sediment built up in the bottom. Now, hopefully when the plumber came out and installed the new water heater for you, he told you about flushing it every year. Now, this is something that you wanna do because normally we've got such hard water, there's so much calcium and magnesium in it that it builds up in here. And when it builds up in the bottom, what it does is it creates just this thick area of calcium and magnesium buildup so that it creates this rumbling, boiling type noise. And what that is, that's the heat down there trying to boil the water through all that. Now, it's not really boiling because it's not gonna get that hot. Your water heater should be set anywhere from 110 to 125 maybe. Some people do turn them up to 140, but as you've got a flame, especially in a gas water heater, as you've got that flame down there heating it up, that water is heating and expanding and rising and going through all that. And that's what makes it make that noise. Now, it's not quite the same on an electric water heater. You still can get that noise. And if you've never flushed your water heater, you've probably got quite a bit of sediment buildup down there. So the hissing noise you can get from a couple of different things. First of all, if it's an electric water heater, do you see how much insulation is in here? See how thick that is? You wanna make sure that this stays. It would be really easy to just set it out of the way. You look at that and think, there's enough already. Well, you want all of it in there. So I'm gonna set this up top, be careful with the screw. But when you look down in here, and you wanna be careful, first of all, you wanna make sure either your power's off or you're very careful getting in here. You don't wanna to touch anything. You wanna look down here, you've got a heating element right there. You wanna make sure that this insulation is not letting cold air inside. Condensation there can literally make a hissing noise. It can get wet when that element heats up, when the tank heats up around it, sometimes you can hear that hissing right there. You've got the thermostat right here above it. That just actually attaches to the tank. It sets on the tank, so there's really nothing going through it. But here, and if there's been a lot of thermal expansion, there could be a small leak around there. Now that normally doesn't happen, but it's something worth looking at. Now these are trainers. They're just sitting here, they'll wobble around a lot. If you're working on a water heater that's installed at the house, you've got the water lines tied in, you've got everything connected, you're really not gonna have any problems like this. But getting all that insulation in both your upper and lower element is a big deal. Now, if you've got a hissing noise on a gas water heater, it can be a couple of different things. Normally, if it's rained outside or it's really cold, you can get condensation in the flue pipe. And when it comes down the middle, a lot of times you'll hear it on that hot metal. Say the burner assembly has just shut off and it's really hot and it's raining and water does make it down the flue, you can actually hear that hissing noise down there. When that burner assembly does kick on and kick off, you can get condensation in there and you will hear a hissing noise from something like that. Cracking, ticking, any noises like that, well, it can be a couple of different things. To be honest, it's normally thermal expansion. And what that means is, think about it, when things get hot, they get bigger, when they get cold, they get smaller. Well, the temperature in your water heater, if your child has just taken an hour and a half long shower, chances are there's nothing but cold water in there. That's actually gonna make that tank contract a little bit. Now, is it heats that's gonna expand a little bit? Not a lot, but you can get a ticking type noise from that, a little popping noise, and all you're doing is you're hearing the thermal expansion. So that's something to be aware of, but to be honest, it's nothing to worry about. What if my water heater's making a screaming whistling noise? A lot of times, the dielectric nipples on tops of water heaters will have this. Now you need this because of the dissimilar metals, but 
We have actually taken a dielectric nipple out before because as you see, there's flow restrictors in here. Now, it's not really made to be a flow restrictor, but that's exactly what it does. And there was so much water going through this that it literally started making a screaming noise, a whining noise. So this is something that if you hear it, and when you hear noises like this at your water heater, one thing you might wanna do, go down to the automotive shop, get a cheap stethoscope. They make a stethoscope that goes together and has a wire on the end. Come home and put that stethoscope on different parts of your water heaters, see where the noise is coming from. All these things are things that can be replaced. So on the Bradford White water heater, the anode rod is on the hot water outlet side. Now I've already loosened this up, but what you want to do is undo it. If this is screaming and making any noise, it's from the water coming in here and having problems here. Now just a normal dielectric nipple that doesn't have an anode rod, they're easy to change out too. But if you have a water heater that has a big hex nut in it up in the top somewhere, that's where your anode rod is. Okay, one of the last noises that we get, and to be honest, it's really not even in the water heater, but you may hear it. The thermal expansion I was talking about a while ago, sometimes have you ever been in your bathroom, maybe you're brushing your teeth or something, and somebody else opens hot water somewhere, and all of a sudden you hear this, it sounds like a drip on the wall. To be honest, it's not a drip. What you're hearing is you're hearing thermal expansion of the water lines. If you have copper lines on the wall, remember the thermal expansion I talked about on the tank, the expansion and contraction? It'll happen there too. Now, sometimes when you hear that expanding, that's exactly what it sounds like. You can actually hear a ticking noise. It sounds like a water drop. Now, if you hear this and there's nobody in the house doing anything, you may have a water drop in the wall. So it may be worth checking out. Look around your baseboards, look on the other side of the wall, see if you see any signs of water. The ticking noise, the water drop noise, that's one that we get often. People are like, man, I know I've got a leak in my wall, I hear it. And the first time I heard it at my house, I actually started listening to the wall a lot closer. So it does happen. Now, how do you avoid most of this? Flush your water heater every year from the time that it's installed. Flush it once a year and you're not gonna have any problems. You're gonna help keep that sediment out and hopefully make it more efficient, make it last longer, and give you hotter water for a longer period of time. If you change the anode rod like I showed you, it can also make the life of your water heater last longer. So Redfish Incorporated asks, hey, I've got well water, I've missed the last two years of flushing my water heater, should I go ahead and resume it? To be honest, with as much calcium as you're saying you get, or as much buildup as you're saying you get, yes, I would. It's a nine year old water heater, so chances are it's out of warranty anyway. You may wanna check that warranty, but as long as you flushed it many years all along, missing a couple of years probably isn't gonna hurt you too much. Go ahead and get it flushing, try and get it back in shape, and then look at replacing it. Patrick Patberg says his is listed as self-cleaning. Should he flush it anyway? Absolutely. Self-cleaning has things like this built in. When the water comes in, it sprays along the bottom to kind of help keep all the sediment mixed up so it stays in the water. That may be why your lavatory is getting a lot of it out of it. Here's what I recommend. Flush it every year. Don't just wait until you have problems. Start in the beginning. If you can keep that sediment from building up in the bottom and filling up the bottom of your water here and creating problems, it's really gonna, it's really gonna help you out. When it says self-cleaning, that's what they mean. They spray the bottom. It doesn't wash it out and it does not keep the sediment from building up. Anyway, great questions today. Thank y'all for asking. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on anything. And if you know anybody that owns a water heater, share it with them. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed, but you may want to flush. Up to you.